I'll find a way to praise you. From the bottom of my broken heart. Cause I think I'd rather strike the match than curse the dark. Yeah, I'll find a way to thank you. Through the bitterness is real and hard. Cause I'd rather take a chance on hope than fall apart. I don't think I'm ready to surrender to the dark. Even if my daylight never dawns, even if my breakthrough the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. 
Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat what with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was helped instantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, show us how we can allow the least of these to have the voices that they deserve. Guide us to see how we can give those without a voice, a voice to proclaim your gospel to the world. Amen. I don't know about you, but I never enjoy hearing this scripture. It's one of the most difficult scriptures to understand. In the last section of the gospel, we hear Jesus calling a woman from Cana a dog. And it's not like nowadays where, you know, guys will call other guys a dog. Like, it's not, it's not that. In this time, a dog is a derogatory term for the Canaanites from the Jewish people. In that time, there was an understanding that the God of Israel, the God we worship, called for the ethnic cleansing otherwise known as a genocide, of the Canaanite people, which this woman was. And all Jews would know about this past directive from the God of Israel, and most likely had a prejudice or hatred for these people. Which is why this language from Jesus is surprising, coming from him. But also not surprising, as Jesus is a Jew and understood the history. And, you know, we believe part of the God of Israel. But it's still hard to believe that this is, that Jesus would have a prejudice, isn't it? Doesn't feel right. And this is not meant to make the Jewish people look bad. It is just to show that every group of people have prejudices and negative stereotypes towards other groups, no matter what group you find yourself in. It's a part of human nature for some reason. But it just doesn't sit right with me that our Lord and Savior, who proclaims that he loves all, is calling this poor woman a dog and confirming that she is less than Jews. And for a long time, I had no answer, not even a theory on why Jesus would say such a horrible thing. But I recently purchased a commentary. And I read that commentary, and it's called the Africa Commentary, All Theologians from Africa. And a lot of them are liberation theologians. And liberation theologians are just people who believe that the very core nature of God is that God is meant to liberate any group of people, no matter what. So I was interested to hear what their take on this was. And they said that Jesus said this in humor. In humor? (laughs) Well, that doesn't make it any better. Jesus is now making fun of her? But then I thought about it some more, and no, Jesus is not making fun of her. He is making fun of the prejudice. Because what did the disciples say first? Send her away. She doesn't belong with us. And Jesus enters in. 
probably sarcastically. See, we have to set the scene and understand who the recipients of the lesson are. And in this story, it's the disciples. This all happened in the presence of the disciples who would have all had this prejudice against the woman. Send her away. She doesn't belong here. And seeing that Jesus led them to the land of Cana, where they were bound to find a Canaanite woman, it was only a matter of time before this scenario happened. Jesus knew what he was doing. So in essence, Jesus brought the disciples to the land of Cana in hopes of this occurring so that a lesson could be taught. So what is that lesson? Is it that being prejudiced against a group of people is a good thing and Jesus says, A-okay? No. <laughs> no. We have to make sure that we read the whole scripture. Jesus doesn't stop with her being a dog. Her persistence and her faith show Jesus that she wasn't just there for a handout, but truly believed in Jesus and who he was. And in her own faith, she proclaimed the gospel. A Canaanite woman, whom the God of Israel wanted to eliminate, according to the Jews at the time, was proclaiming the gospel. And to Jesus, she was not a dog, but a woman of great faith, he says. He starts out with what her worldly identity is and ends with what God's identity for her is. A woman of great faith. Much to the disciples' surprise. This was a lesson to the disciples about not allowing prejudices to influence who we see people as and who we help. To the Jews, to the disciples at the time, she was unworthy of their help because she was better off dead anyway. To the disciples, she was nothing more than a Canaanite woman who should have been wiped from the earth ages ago. But to Jesus, she was a woman of great faith, worthy of mercy. And again, this isn't meant to try to make the Jews look bad. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to come across anti-Semitic. Um, but, but rather, it's a lesson on human nature and our desire to create prejudices towards other people and how God doesn't approve of that. Too often we see that our own prejudices we put on God. We put our own prejudices and assign them to God. And God in this scripture is saying, no, your prejudices are not my prejudices. We like to label and judge and condemn groups of people in the name of God, but Jesus is showing us that one, that the one who has every right to judge doesn't and instead shows mercy to all people, even those whom we initially thought God wished were dead. This once shocking text where we see Jesus being too human for our liking is now a super powerful message for me on grace and how us humans learn lessons. God enters into our sinful ways so that when our guard is down and our hearts are truly shown, God steps in and does something we totally did not expect and shocks our conscience. It is now my understanding that Jesus entered into these prejudices so that the disciples thought that Jesus was on his side. The disciples showed their true colors. And Jesus said, those aren't my true colors. This woman has great faith. And in the entire book of Matthew, she is the only one who Jesus says has great faith. A Canaanite woman. Thank <laughs> you. 
God wants us to be fully in tune with who we are in this very moment, because only when we are completely honest with ourselves and who we are can the true transformation start. I guarantee you those disciples felt this big. Love, gentleness, compassion are all built upon souls that are true to who they are and open vessels to the Spirit for what the Spirit is calling them to be. But bitter, angry, prejudiced souls are built on resentment of self and the unwillingness to show one's true self to God and the world either because of fear or because of self-hatred for various other reasons. God doesn't want us to hate others or even ourselves. God wants us to love ourselves and each other, not because we are perfect, but because we are worth loving. If God can love us for who we are, then why can't we love ourselves for who we are? We can't hate ourselves and love others. It doesn't work that way. If we can find a way to truly love who we are, that love will be hard to contain. And it will spread out to others. And when prejudice, hatred, resentment are produced in the world, we then will have the strength like Jesus did to show mercy when everyone else chooses to condemn. The Canaanite woman knew her worth. Even though they hated her, she loved herself and knew that she was worthy of mercy. She knew that she was more than a dog and that her life mattered. She fought with God and she won. And God recognized her worth and blessed her. Let us not just learn from Jesus, but from the Canaanite woman. Let us be platforms for those who don't have a voice so that all people who feel like their lives don't matter can be reminded that they are truly worthy of love because they are a child of God. And there is nothing anyone can do on this earth to change that. Love yourself like God loves you. And love others like God loves them. And we'll all do just fine. Amen.